In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Huawei Watch 3 Pro. I kind of used it for about three weeks to a month, and I've got some thoughts on it, so we're gonna be sharing that with you in this video, so without wasting any more time, let's get started. Inside the box, you're gonna get the Huawei Watch 3 Pro, obviously, as well as the puck-shaped magnetic charger. We don't wanna waste a lot of time on the unboxing because that's pretty much it. Now, let's move on to something that actually matters, which is the build quality and the design on this. The Huawei Watch 3 Pro has a very premium feel to it. You have that traditional watch circular design that we're used to for years now, unlike the Apple Watch, which has that more square shape. It comes with titanium casing in silver, kinda on the heavier side, which makes it feel a little bit more premium actually. It has that heft to it. So on the right side of the watch, you get the 3D rotating crown with haptic feedback. So that feels very premium and nice. And you actually have that input when you're rotating the crown. I like that. Then underneath that, you get a shortcut key, which is configurable. Uh, the default is for the fitness application, which is what I left it on because that's what I'm going to use most of the time with the smartwatch. Now the straps it comes with are genuine leather and they look really nice. I mean, look at that. For a lifestyle going with any outfit kind of watch strap, these are pretty sick. But if you're going to be working out a lot in this and you expect to sweat a lot in this, I would definitely recommend switching them out for um, silicone straps maybe, which would work a lot better. So it's a standard 22 millimeter fit. You should be able to put any straps that you want. Moving on to the display. You get a 1.43 inch AMOLED display that is quite bright. I didn't have any issues viewing it in even harsh direct sunlight and I was pretty pleased with that. It was even brighter than I expected in some cases. In addition to that, it also comes with an always on display mode and the watch faces support a complementary watch face for the always on display. So each watch face that you have has its unique sort of alternate to the actual watch face in the always on on display mode and all of these actually look very very nice it's very well optimized you also get a bunch of different watch faces some are actually interactive as well one of them that we posted on our tiktok and our reels which you should check out is pretty cool it's an arcade style pinball machine from back in the days and you can actually play with it uh if you want to relax and spend some time by yourself i mean obviously it'll drain your battery life but it's cool that they've done that really it's more interactive now if there's one thing that i didn't like about how the display looks um, i would say it's the bezels around it now i know it does give that really nice aesthetic to it makes it look like a traditional uh, luxury watch but as a smart watch i would genuinely prefer an edge to edge display to give me that full immersion in using the smart watch this would obviously also extend the size of the display and give me more room to play around with because considering the fact that it's a circular display already you're losing out on some space on the top right left bottom right left because everything is made for square devices so that's one thing i would have preferred but it's not something that's terrible about it it's just a personal preference now let's move on to the navigation and how you interact with the watch if you scroll down from the top you're given the control panel where you have all your various settings you scroll up from the bottom that's where all your notifications are going to be sitting if you scroll left from the main screen that's where you're going to see the weather and if you scroll right that's where you have your various widgets like the heart rate monitoring spo2 monitoring uh, your exercise rings and you can customize all of those by yourself if you tap on the 3d crown it takes you to the the app menu which is very similar to the apple watch the design to it especially when you rotate the 3d crown you can really see that they've kind of copied that from apple where you get that wide view and then you can zoom in uh, to different applications uh, even the haptic feedback while you're doing that is very very similar and lastly pressing down on the shortcut button underneath the 3d crown like i said earlier is going to give you your fitness and workout modes now moving on to the health aspect and the different sensors built into this you get a all-day heart rate monitoring sensor Sensor, obviously you get the spo2 blood oxygen monitoring as well as they've included their very own temperature checking for the skin so it's a skin temperature checker located at the bottom of the watch which is able to recognize your temperature i think they did this because of the whole you know pandemic thing so yeah it's not very accurate even the application says that it's just for reference but yeah it's there if you need it now the workout modes it comes with over a hundred workout modes with 19 pro workout modes there's 85 custom modes with automatic exercise detection for six of the most common types of exercises. So if you start walking or running or jogging, it'll recognize that immediately and start measuring it. Now, another pretty important aspect within the fitness and workout side of things for the sensors would be the built-in GPS. This does come with a built-in GPS, which wasn't really good. 
at all, actually. There was almost no accuracy with it when I was comparing it to something like the Suunto Line Peak that we recently reviewed, which is a dedicated uh, fitness watch. So the accuracy on that was far, far more superior. Um, and the accuracy on this was way, way less than that. Even the Apple Watch was way better than this in terms of accuracy. Um, this showed like I ran in a straight line and to the left, when in reality, I went in circles around my block like, like 10 times. The Sunto 9 Peak was perfectly able to capture that and each individual step. The Apple Watch was slightly less accurate, but definitely had the same pattern to it, while the Huawei Watch 3 Pro completely off. I don't know what's going on there, I don't know what's wrong with it, but yeah, the GPS is definitely not reliable. All of this data is then shared over and synced with the Huawei Health app, which is present on both iOS and Android devices. This also gives you the full aggregate of everything you need. You get your SpO2 levels there, you can see the average heart rate you have, your sleep, your exercise, the routes, everything you've taken. All that information is then stored and synced across to the Huawei Health app, very similar as the bands that we've seen in the past. As far as the software Software is concerned, this is the first version of a smart device from Huawei for the watch lineup that is running Harmony OS. Harmony OS was recently announced by Huawei as their newest operating system. We tried it out with the MatePad Pro 12.6 and it worked really well, very nice integrated with Huawei devices and we're really keen to see how much further they can really take it. Right now it's still in the early stages so we're gonna see a fair bit of improvement I'm pretty sure. This watch comes with two gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of storage, which is great for storing your music or downloading different applications, which you can do from the app gallery. So as of now, there are not that many applications that are supported on the app gallery with Harmony OS, but obviously with the progression of time, you're gonna get a lot more application support, maybe things like Spotify, a lot more support for different applications because this also does come with Wi-Fi 2.4G as well as its very own eSIM, so you don't need to carry on your phone everywhere you go. Speaking of the eSIM, you can receive and make calls directly from the watch even without your smartphone if you have the eSIM activated. But even if you do use your smartphone, the connection with Bluetooth works pretty well. You can call and receive with crisp quality both on the listening side and the speaking, the receiver side. So it works pretty well. I did a few test calls and I was pretty happy with the performance. As far as notifications are concerned, I was using an iPhone 12 mini with this, which isn't honestly the best device to use on it. Any iOS device integration with a smartwatch that isn't iOS generally sucks. And this kind of has the similar sort of thing. So when you receive a notification, you can kind of expand on it further, like reading further in the information, but you can't quick reply, you can't send emojis, you can't do anything else outside of that. So it's just viewing your notifications. Now using all these applications and GPS is obviously gonna wear down on your battery life, which brings us to the battery life. The Huawei Watch 3 Pro is set to have about a five day battery life if you use it in the most optimized mode, or at least like three days of battery life if you use it intensively with GPS and all that turned on. From my testing, when I was using it for runs and sleep tracking and all of that stuff, it lasted me a little over three days, which is pretty good actually. That's a pretty massive battery for smartwatches. My Apple Watch uh, SE, for example, lasts me just about a day and a half to two days. Uh, so this was refreshing to see getting three days of battery life a little bit more even in some cases. But when you do run out of battery life, the recharge time on this is kind of slow because the battery is slightly bigger and better. I guess you could say it lasts a little bit longer. The charge process is kind of slow. So it takes about three hours to go from 0% to 100%, which can be a little bit slow. Now enough of all the specs and stuff. Let's, let's talk about who this is really for and whether you should buy this. So I'm gonna put it in three categories. Number one, if you're an iOS user, don't buy it. It just does not make sense. There's so many features that this has that I'm not able to use with an iOS device. I don't really recommend it. If you like the aesthetic to it and you have a bit of cash lying around, go for it. But really, if you're using an iPhone, don't get it. Number two, if you're using an Android device and you wanna get a new smartwatch that has more of that classic look, very classy looking, it's got those nice bezels around, you get a nice AMOLED display, eSIM controls. It's a pretty good watch. There are others out there, even slightly cheaper, but yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good watch for Android users. But lastly, if you are a Huawei user and within the Huawei ecosystem, this is a no-brainer. If you're looking for a smartwatch and you don't have one right now, or even if you do, 
probably sell that off and get this one because the integration with Harmony OS for the newer devices is something we're really looking forward to. But with that being said, if you're someone who's doing a lot of usability side of things, like installing a lot of applications on your smartwatch and really using it as a utility and external device outside of your smartwatch, this is not the device for you. As of now, at least, Harmony OS is not capable of supporting so many applications and utility side of things uh, like the Apple Watch SE can do. I can do so much with this watch without even needing my phone, which is absolutely mind blowing. So uh, in that aspect of things, I don't recommend this watch for people who want to use it as a utility feature. All right, that's it. That's everything we have on the Huawei Watch 3 Pro. If you enjoyed this, a like would be appreciated. It helps out the channel. If you guys enjoyed this, definitely do subscribe for more like this. And we'll see you again in the next video. Until then, 